Okay, so exercises on permutation groups again, but this time from topics in algebra. Now here, uh, there are three parts of course. In the first one, two permutations x and y are given. Each one of them is a product of two transpositions, that is two, two cycles, as we can see. Now we have to find a permutation A such that A inverse x A equals y and then in part B uh, a similar uh, equation is given but we have to prove that this equation is not solvable for any permutation A. In other words there is no permutation A such that A inverse times this 3 cycle times A is equal to this permutation and exactly like that we have this one also. Here also no such A exists for which this equation is true. So let us see the solution. The solution will not be a satisfactory one in a particular sense. Let me just uh, write the thing down and then I will say why. Taking A equal to 1, 5, 2, 6, 4, 3, we get Okay, so we have just simply out of nowhere taken one permutation A and now what we are going to do for this particular A we are going to see whether this is true or not. So let us just calculate A inverse X A. Now we already know how to write the inverse of a cycle. We just take the opposite order, I mean the or original order in which the symbols are appearing in the cycle, we just change the order, we take the opposite one and that gives us the inverse of the cycle, 3, 4, 6, 2, 5, 1 times x, x is 1 comma 2 times 3 comma 4 times a so we continue from here 1 5 2 6 4 3 okay now we calculate the product and here at this step uh, so again, I am going to say something which I have uh, probably said many times before, but still, because we are in Hurstein's algebra, where the value of the function f at x is denoted using this symbol x f and not f of x, because of this uh, notational Thing, this notational preference, our calculation will start from the left end and will move rightward. And I, I have in fact many times already said the reason for this. The reason is that the cycles that you see here, each one of them is a permutation means each one of them is a function. And the products that we see here are just they are just function composition. So if you are applying this entire product on some input which of course will be a symbol, uh, one of these symbols or some other symbol coming from the underlying set on which these permutations are acting. So if you do that, what will happen? By definition of function composition, say you have x here. On x, you are first going to apply this cycle, this thick cycle and then on that result you are going to apply this two cycle and so on. Okay, 
So that's why our calculation starts from here and moves rightward. However, for those people or in those algebra books where this notation is preferred, is the one that is used, the input will be put here. So for them, the calculate, I mean uh, the first permutation that is going to be applied on x is this one and then on the result this will be applied and so on. So there for them uh, the calculation starts at the rightmost end and moves leftward. Okay, so for us it moves like this. I mean uh, the order in which things are appearing. And this is in fact the main reason why this notation is preferred by algebraists. It makes composition easy. I mean the order of the composition easy to understand. Anyway, so we now understand what we have to do here. And I am again reiterating always make sure before calculating a product like this which functional notation is being used. Okay. So now let us just see what uh, all these things do. So because things are starting here from 3, so we just simply take 3 itself. 3. Now 3 is taken to 4 by this one. In, and that 4 is unchanged by this one then. So 4 remains 4 but then 4 is made 3 by this one and then that 3 is sent to 1 by this final one. That means 3 goes to 1. Okay. Then we look at 1. 1 goes to 3. 3 is unchanged. 3 goes to 4. 4 goes to 3. So that means 1 goes back to 3. So this is 1 cycle that is 1 2 cycle. Fine. So next we look at 4. 4 goes to 6. 6 is unchanged by this one also by this one but this one uh, takes 6 back to 4 that means 4 goes to 4. So 4 is unchanged by this entire product so 4 will not appear. If you want you can just simply write a one cycle but that we normally do not do. Those symbols that do not appear are uh, considered to be the ones that are kept fixed. Then we go to 6. 6 goes to 2, 2 goes to 1, 1 is unchanged by this one, 1 goes to 5. So that means 6 goes to 5. Okay. Then 5. 5 goes to 1, 1 goes to 2, 2 is unchanged by this one, 2 goes to 6. That means 5 goes back to 6. Anything else that we missed? We have already uh, we have already done this thing on three, then one, three, one, then four. We have already seen four is unchanged. Then we have seen six, five. So that means we are yet to see what happens to two. Okay. So two, the first one takes two to five takes 2 to 5 you understand what that means it just means that when your input is 2 output is 5 or in other words the value of this function this permutation at 2 is 5 okay so 2 goes to 5 then 5 is unchanged by this one also by this one and this one again takes 5 back to 2 so 2 goes to 2 2 is unchanged okay so this is our final answer and is it y? Yes, it is y. In fact, I am going to write it the way it is given. 5, 6, 1, 3. But I need to justify this step also. Can we just simply write like this? Not always. You see, there are uh, two things happening here you can see that this symbol and this symbol they have been in fact changed 
each one of them has been changed in place of 6 comma 5 we have written 5 comma 6 so that means we have changed the order we have taken the opposite order so what we have written here is not actually this itself but um, well it will be this itself but that comes afterwards so in this order actually this is the inverse of this transposition but it's a two cycle and we know that the inverse of a two cycle is the two cycle itself so that is why in place of 6 comma 5 we can just write 5 comma 6 and you can i mean instead of uh, bringing in inverses and all those things you just see whether these functions are equal or not this function has output 5 when the input is 6 here also that is the case the output is 5 when input is 6 the output is 6 when the input is 5 and that is also the case here so actually they are equal and similarly 3 comma 1 is equal to 1 comma 3 and we seem to have changed the order of their appearance also which we can do because these are disjoint cycles and hence they call it so that's why this is in fact equal to y but a big question is still there fine we have got one a but the question is how did we figure out this a in the first place that's the question how do i know that this a would work is it just simply trial and error it can be but there is a way of finding this a so this is equal to y which however i am not going uh, into the details of okay the thing is that this a of course simply is not something that can be found by trial and error if one wants one can find but given how many symbols there are it will take it will likely take a very long time if you just simply blindly start doing calculations and see what a works instead you can just um, i won't say exactly how this a is coming not right now but we will see how one can find this a when we reach the end of the next section right now we are in section 210 right in section 211 when we reach the end there we will see how one can uh, guess such an a you can however still you can look at uh, this entire calculation and you will see eventually you will see a pattern do you see one thing that x that is this thing and y that is this thing they have the same cycle structure that means both of them are products of two two cycles so you can see that we have uh, a sort of correspondence here 1 goes to 5 1 is going to 5 2 is going to 6 2 is going to 6 3 is going to 1 3 is going to 1 4 is going to 3 4 is going to 3 okay so that kind of correspondence is there and in fact that itself allows us to guess what this a will be but I'm, I'm not going to say anything more than this okay so we will see this at the end of section 211 for now we just simply uh, consider it as a trial and error thing that we have found one a which works and that's just it that also does not tell us that this a is unique or anything we have been asked to just find one permutation a we have done that and the job is over however that cannot be done for the for these next two parts 
the fact that the cycle structures of x and y are the same plays a role here plays a role in the existence of such an a if the cycle structures are different for example uh, that's what we have here here uh, the in place of x we have this three cycle whereas on the right side we have a pro product of a two cycle and a three cycle they are different structures cycle structures so in this case actually no such a will exist however we are not able to if you want you can of course prove it by some other means but when we will see at the end of section 211 how exactly one uh, finds out this a from the sameness of the cycle structure and how if you have two different cycle structures such an a cannot be found and actually no a cannot be found unless we see that we won't be able to uh, answer this satisfactorily so for parts b and c what i am going to do I am just simply going to use that advanced knowledge that is whatever we are going to encounter at the end of the next section. I will just simply mention that and we will have to wait for uh, that time when we see these things. Okay, So let me just write in place of part B this spins. The cycle structures and this term cycle structure itself also is uh, probably something that we have not yet defined formally cycle structure is uh, the pattern in which you have the disjoint cycles in a permutation okay that thing for example here you see that this is a product of two disjoint cycles one of them is two is a two cycle and the other one is a three cycle so its cycle structure is two comma three something like that is there but right now we understand what a cycle structure is and we are just simply writing things in this manner that uh, we are using some terminology and some concepts which have not yet come so we are just simply keeping it like that since the cycle structures of the permutations one comma two comma three and one comma three times 5 comma 7 comma 8 are different no permutation A exists or we can like write like this for which this element is equal to the other one no such a can be found and c is also still oh i need to mention where this thing is coming from c the end of section 211 here also you can uh, before i wrap this up i have already done a little bit 3 comma 4 times 1 comma 5 that means here also the x is a just a two cycle 
but y is a product of two two cycles disjoint two cycles so they also have different cycle structures so for them also no such a exists If you are frustrated by this type of uh, exercises whose complete solution solutions need advanced knowledge which only occurs much later, then don't be frustrated because uh, it is done deliberately by the author. What Herstein wants us to do is he wants us to struggle with these things ourselves not not in an attempt to bring out the actual entire solution from us but rather uh, the aim is to bring out some original ideas that we may come across in an attempt to find something as if we ourselves are uh, trying to find it for the first time so if we do that struggle even uh, a little bit you will see that it, it is very frustrating. You keep, keep on thinking about these things, nothing comes to your mind. But eventually you will see that uh, you come up with something, some sort of understanding. Suddenly something clicks. Suddenly there is an aha moment. Okay. You suddenly realize, okay, so this way things may work. So those moments are actually the ones that we strive for in mathematics. Those are few and far between, but they occur. And when they occur, it's really magical. So uh, he wants to give us that opportunity. Otherwise, what you see, you see, you of all the things that are already given to us, then it, it is in a sense, uh, it becomes boring and dull. We should... Uh, think for ourselves also sometimes but anyway because i am doing it for the video so i will just simply write things prematurely see the end of section 211 and for part c also it's the same C part B above. So that is a kind of a very bad looking imperfect solution, but it is a solution nonetheless. If you don't want to call it a solution, you can just uh, treat it as a hint. Next. Exercise 9. Okay, so in exercise 9, we are we will go, uh, we will see something else. But before we leave this thing, uh, a question may pop up in your mind. What is so special about this? Or let me just uh, extend it and make it an equation. You have two elements x and y which are permutations. What is so special about the existence of an element A for which this equation is true? It seems like something just ad hoc. Ad hoc means it's just something, it seems like something random. Okay. But it's not random. Actually, this equation can be used to give us a relation, a binary relation, not on permutation groups, but on any group. If you have a group in which you say you consider two elements x and y, then you can define a relation like this. x is related to y if and only if there exists an element a in the group G 
for which this equation is true okay and that relation it has a name it's called conjugacy and when this happens these elements x and y are called conjugates of each other now it turns out that this conjugacy relation is an equivalence relation so if you recall while proving lagrange's theorem we did it way back but still you can recall that there also we introduced one equivalence relation uh, involving that subgroup that we had here also this is an equivalence relation so what it will do is that it will partition the group into disjoint equivalence classes we already know these things now there also from that partition while proving lagrange's theorem in fact using that partition and counting number of elements in each equivalence class we prove lagrange's theorem here also we will get something okay and that something is the groups class equation we will see these things and the using the class equation itself we will be able to say many things about the group and particularly in the case where the group is a finite group and that is why this relation is important this equation is important and here uh, you see a glimpse into that that that's why this uh, thing has been uh, given here this exercise somewhat prematurely okay now we see the ninth one the ninth one is not very difficult determine for what m an m cycle is an even permutation so we just straight away consider an m cycle for an m cycle an m cycle of course means a cycle having uh, m symbols for an m cycle m where m of course is a positive integer we have we already know how to write such an m cycle as a product of transpositions x1 x2 times x1 x3 times x1 x4 and like that it will go and finally we will have the transposition x1 x7 keep in mind again that because our uh, product works like that from uh, the left side to the right side the decomposition is like this if it is the other way around then you may have to change these things not may have to you have to change these things okay so an m cycle can be written as a product of transpositions like this now how many transpositions are there in this clearly m minus 1 and we know by definition that a permutation is even if it can be expressed as a product of an even number of transpositions 
So that means uh, in order for this cycle to be an even permutation, we want the number of transpositions here to be even and that is m minus 1. So m minus 1 is to be even means m has to be odd. Should I write those things? It's uh, we already know these things now, so I can write directly. So the m cycle is an even permutation if and only if m is odd okay the parity changes if it is even if and only if the cycle length is odd that means if the cycle length is even then it's an odd permutation and from this we of course will be able to uh, decide if uh, any permutation not just a cycle if such a thing is given whether it's even or odd and that's what the next one is about the tenth one again determine which of the following are even permutations Three permutations are given. The first one is this. The second one, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, I should perhaps write it more carefully because. We also have 4, 5, okay, and part C, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, and 2, 5, okay. Now, if we uh, just simply apply the definition of evenness and oddness of a permutation, we would then have to I mean in each case here we would have to express the entire thing as a product of transpositions but now we don't do not need to do that it's because we have already figured out when a cycle is an even permutation and when it is not so we can use that here You can make the solution that now I'm going to write more elaborate by writing the reasons. I will just simply, however, uh, directly write things. And we will just see why what I'm going to write here is true. The permutations in part A and part B are odd. So they are not, okay, let me just see once more. This is odd, I can immediately see that. What about this one? A five cycle, a three cycle and a, okay, yes, this is also odd the
permutation in part C is even, this one is even. Okay, so but how? How do we just simply instantly write like this? You see, let's just uh, look at the first one first. It's a product of a three cycle and a two cycle. Because three is odd, the three cycle is an even permutation, even times. Because two is even, a two cycle is an odd permutation. Now we know from our uh, previous things that we already saw when we were going through the text material that this product is an odd permutation. That's why the uh, one in part A is odd. Let's see the next one also similarly. Here we have a 5 cycle. 5 is odd so that means this is even. Even times 3 even times to odd. Even times even is even but again even times odd is odd. You should understand that here we are not talking about numbers. We are not talking about integers. We are talking about permutations and their product means composition. If you think of numbers here what I have written here is just simply wrong. If you I mean uh, what I am trying to say here is that if you just simply think of 6, 4 and say 3, these numbers have nothing to do with these things, okay. This is definitely not odd if you just simply consider the product because already a, an even number has appeared so the product is going to be even. It doesn't matter what you multiply or what you keep on multiplying. But in our uh, universe of permutations and their product, this is odd. Okay, a single odd appears or an odd number of odds appears, then you get odd. And the third one is of course very easy. Already it is given as a product of how many? 4, 2 cycles. So by definition it is even because 4 is even. So that's just it. Now I am ending the video here itself. If you have any thoughts on these things, positive or negative, whatever it is, you can use the comment section below or you can mail me at my usual address. The link will be there in the description. So we have done group theory today. This, uh, what's the day today? Tuesday. This coming Friday, we are going to again see field theory. And then we will go to um, vector spaces and then calculus will come. So that being said, I wrap things up for tonight here itself. So see you on Friday with field theory. Until then, this is me, Lucifer from a mathematical room. Have a nice night.